I can't believe my 2017 Volkswagen Golf R used to look like this. After completely rebuilding the front end of this car and practically everything in the interior, we're almost ready to start working on the rear end and pretty much completing the build. But before we do that, there's a couple of things left that we have to take care of. Obviously these need to be in the car. This obviously is not supposed to look like that. We're missing the steering wheel airbag. This instrument cluster is out of whack. This is a little bit concerning. And to top it off, the rear bumper has parking sensors and for whatever reason the new one doesn't so let's take a break from talking about all the negative stuff that's still wrong with the car and focus on the positive if you happen to miss the last episode of the golf r rebuild let me catch you up to speed i was able to successfully reinstall our creaseless finally headliner back into the car getting me another step closer to a completed looking interior once i had that installed i attempted to replace the dashboard because the original one had a massive hole blown through it from the the airbag deploying. Everything had to come out, and I mean everything. Once the center console was removed, I stripped the dashboard from all its doodads and gizmos, and out it popped. Keeping everything as organized as possible, I was able to successfully reinstall everything back onto the new dashboard, and finally, the interior was starting to look like it had before the accident. But even still, there is so much more work that needs to be done. To start off today's list of things that need to get done, I began by putting both seats back in the car and started reassembling the passenger seat first because it has manual controls. I reconnected the three plugs that go underneath the carpet and then tightened down the four bolts that hold the seat to the floor. I did the same to the driver's side. And here's a better look at the three plugs that need to get reconnected. Remember, anytime you are working with wires, it's a good idea to unplug the battery, especially with yellow connectors as those usually indicate airbags and then the other two go in very easily you gotta remember to slide this over here you slide it on top and then you push the black in that locks the clip and the last clip is pretty easy it goes right here and then this connects right here and you are good to go Close this down, wrap the screw, I believe you wrap it right over here, and then you reinstall this little bad guy, and the little pin right over it. Good, now we're locked and loaded. So in order for me to get to the last two bolts to the front seat, I have to plug the battery back in because this is automatic and I can't just slide it back like the passenger. But before I plug the battery back in, I wanna go ahead and quickly install the new steering wheel airbag. All right, so installing this is super easy. There's only two connectors that you have to plug in. The first one slides in right here, if I can find it. That's in, and then the second goes right here, you push the yellow in, and you press the white tab down. Now we can kind of move this back to the way it's supposed to be, like this. And then we can slide this airbag in. We just click it together. And now we have a new front airbag, cool. With the battery reinstalled, I can finally slide the seat back, giving me access to the last two bolt holes on the seat. All right, so I know I've had this dent right here that obviously looks terrible, but I just realized, you know, since I took the back panel out and there's literally a hole right here where I can access the quarter panel, I'm just gonna try to like push it out. Oh, just like that. Yeah, just push it out with my hand. That probably couldn't have been any easier. I mean, yeah, there's still a tad bit there, but I mean, I just pretty much popped the whole thing out. Well guys, we have officially reinstalled and put back together the entire interior of this car. The only thing left is just the uh, little SRS module here, which we'll get to in a second, but I'm just at a loss for words. Every single thing is back in this car uh, to the way it was on the interior. I don't know if you guys remember when we originally got the car, the first video we made, the interior of this car was absolutely destroyed. I mean destroyed. 
holes in the airbag. You know, curtain airbags, you know, deployed. The steering wheel was exploded. Like everything was just absolutely in pieces. So to finally see everything back in the way it's supposed to be, it just makes me a lot more confident going forward into this build. We can see the finish line now, so it's just pretty incredible. But I guess the next thing that we're going to do is turn the car on, try to clear as many codes as we can, and then I'm gonna plug in the SRS module and try to clear the codes yet again. And ideally, the airbag light should turn off. And then we'll start working on the instrument cluster. Well, the time has finally come. After clearing all the codes, it's time to plug in the SRS module and pray that the airbag light goes off. All right, so the instructions now say, reconnect the battery we just did, and then turn the ignition to accessory mode. The SRS light should be eliminated for a few seconds and then extinguish. To complete the cycle, turn off the car. So we're just gonna click into accessory mode. It should stay lit and then it should go away. And we have to turn the car off and we'll be good, so. Now, before I show you what's about to happen, I want to explain to you what's going through my head. You see, besides airbags and seatbelts in your SRS system, you have these things called impact sensors. It's a little sensor on the front of the car with a metal ball held back by magnets. During a crash, the extreme stopping forces the ball forward and completes the circuit, immediately telling your airbags to deploy. As far as I know, these are reusable sensors because I never changed them. So fingers crossed nothing happens. Let's see. All right, this is accessory mode. I think it's gone. I think the airbag light's gone. It's all the other lights, but the airbag light's gone. Holy cow, that was a lot easier than I thought. I was super worried about plugging this in because I was afraid that maybe there were crash sensors that were damaged or something. We didn't get any codes for that, but um, I thought it would have been a little bit more difficult or challenging than just starting the car and not having an airbag light on. But there's no codes for airbags, which means we're good. This is insane. I'm so shocked that there's no airbag light on the dash anymore. So now it says to complete the cycle, turn off the car. And now your SRS module is fully reset to work again. Car's off. I can't believe it. That was so freaking easy. All right, guys, so check this out. I just rescanned the car and no more. Is there over 40 something faults? We're now down to 33, which I know is still plenty of fault codes, but there's plenty more to fix on this car. But regardless, this is some incredible progress and I'm extremely happy. One of the faults I had on the car was for a steering wheel calibration error. And I read somewhere that if you turn the wheel all the way to the right and then all the way to the left, that it could clear the code. So I figured I would give it a try. All right, so another update. I just turned the wheel all the way left and then all the way right. And almost all of the dash lights just went off completely. That's pretty insane. The only light that I now have on the dash is just a tire pressure light. Check this out. Yeah, we only have like this, which is tire pressure. And then some of these down here, which has to do with like maybe the uh, adaptive cruise control and parking sensors. And we'll get to that later, but I cannot believe all the freaking lights just went off. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rescan the car and see how many codes we have now. Remember, we were at 33. So after literally turning the steering wheel all the way left and all the way right and restarting the car, we went from 33 codes to 26 codes. And I don't even know what I did. I literally just turned the wheel. So I cannot believe how quickly we're knocking off codes on this. All right, so before we go any further in the build, the two parts that we've installed so far is the steering wheel airbag and the dash with the airbag. Both of those combined was $656 and they were each around 300 bucks, bringing our new total to $18,333.29 for a 2017 Volkswagen Golf R, obviously there's a lot more stuff to fix, but a car like this, had it not been in an accident, would be worth around $33,000 with this amount of miles. So it's maybe 32, 31,000, and we're only at 18.3. So we're doing a pretty good job so far. So the next thing on our to-do list is fixing the instrument cluster needle, which is a bit too low. So I need to take the instrument cluster back out 
uh, in order to fix it. Some of this might look familiar because the cluster had to be removed in order to replace the dash in the last episode. The first thing that needs to come out is the vent and then the trim pieces, making sure to disconnect the two wires behind the middle vent. You then need to remove the top steering wheel trim and then remove the two screws that hold the instrument cluster to the dashboard. And lastly, just pull lightly on the instrument cluster and disconnect the one wire in the back. And just like that, we're out. With the instrument cluster out, you can see what our problem is. Right there, that needle is not supposed to be that low. It's supposed to be at the zero. So we're gonna try to take this apart and put this back to where it's supposed to be hopefully without damaging anything. On the back of the instrument cluster, there are seven screws that need to come off. It's then held down by a clip on either side. Carefully pulling up, I was able to separate the cover from the circuit board, and I made sure to wear some powder-free gloves because I was told the actual front gauge cluster is very delicate, and any oils from your hands or powder from your gloves could damage the front fascia and ruin it. I wanna shout out Mark, a subscriber also, for sending me a detailed video on how to do this. As without it, I probably would have broken it by now. You have to lightly turn the dial counterclockwise in order to set the needle in the correct spot. Yeah, one would think turning it clockwise just a little to put it at zero would be fine, but that would actually break the motor in the back. Okay, fair enough. That looks about right. Let's go test it out. Now, before I put all the screws back, I want to just quickly test the cluster to make sure everything was correct. With that in mind, I put everything back together and just put one screw to hold it in place. All right, so I just plugged it back in. The battery's off. I'm gonna turn the battery on. And we're just gonna put the car in accessory mode and hopefully it stays at zero. I have a pretty good feeling it is. All right, so here is the moment of truth. The only thing, I mean, the car is probably gonna throw codes because this is unplugged, but uh, I would think everything should work now because that looks like it's in the right position already. And that was the easiest little reset I've ever had to do. So let's press the accessory button and see what happens. Okay, we fixed it. I can't believe it. Let's shut this off. I can't believe it, we freaking fixed it. With everything confirmed working, I quickly reassembled the instrument cluster and the dash and hopefully put it back for good this time. with the interior of the car finally back to stock OEM. I mean, it's been a long time in the making since it's been like this. It's time to start working on the rear end of the car. And the first thing we're gonna be doing is installing a new end link because the one I saw seems to be broken. And this only ran me about like 12 bucks online and it looks pretty straightforward to install. In order to access the rear sway bar end link, I needed to take off the wheel. This gave me just enough room to work on it. There's only two bolts that need to come off, but it's not that simple. The the bottom bolt you need to hold from one side with a socket and the other side with a wrench to stop it from spinning and then it will be able to unscrew. And here's the broken one. This is half. We have to, we have to get the ball joint out which is stuck to the actual uh, sway bar link but that shouldn't be all that difficult either. As for the second bolt, you need to use a torque spit to hold the ball joint in the middle from spinning, and then you can unscrew it with a ratchet. I had to use an extension actually for this because the spring was in the way from just using a wrench. That's the other piece. Cool, all dirty now. I'm glad there's no blood though. Then it was time to reinstall the new one by doing the opposite of what we just did. Alrighty, so if you check this out back here, you can see it does not fit because the uh, sway bar, the rear sway bar is too high. So in order to get this bottom boot up, we have to compress the spring like this. And you can see this is going up. So what I did is I got my other jack from my car and we're gonna just take the easy way out instead of hurting ourselves. Little rag so I don't break hurt the caliper. I mean the rotor. And we are almost in. Get us up a little bit higher. And up oh, almost one or two more spins. And look at that, we're through. Bada bing, bada boom. 
Okay, let's put that nut on. All right guys, so the rear sway bar ball joint thingy bobber is back in and everything is looking good, tightened down. The next thing and the last thing to wrap up today's video is gonna be fixing the damaged wiring harness, which I kind of showed you a little bit in the beginning of today's episode, but I'm gonna show you it a lot more in depth. Now, I bought these really cool things on Amazon, which I've seen other YouTubers use, but these are solder seal wire connectors. So it's basically heat shrink tubing, but there's a little bit of solder inside of it. And all you gotta use is a heat gun and you're good to go. So we're gonna try that out. As you can see, when I uncover this bad boy, we have two things to fix. We have the rear bumper, which needs to be wired together. And then we have the valve control for the exhaust, which needs to be wired up. And then we should be good to go. So starting with the exhaust valve control, I spliced the three wires that needed repair and also disconnected it from the valve to make it easier. I slid the tubing over both wires and lined up the metal part in the middle of the two exposed wires so that the solder could bond them together. Then it was time to use the heat gun, making sure to rotate the wire to seal it evenly. As you can see, the tubing shrinks and the solder actually melts and bonds the wire together. I repeated the process on the next two wires and then started working on the rear bumper harness which had a total of eight severed wires. I guess the one good thing about Volkswagen is that they made this extremely easy to identify each wire apart by using different colors and then by adding stripes and dots to other wires. Once all the wires were reconnected I put the original weather stripping back over it and then finished it up with some electrical tape just to make sure everything was sealed correctly. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. We were able to pretty much fix all the small stuff and next video, we're gonna be working on the rear of the car, which is gonna be some of the hardest stuff yet. But if you're liking this content, then definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, all right, first off, let me go on, uh, unplug the, the battery. Pull me closer